We are back right now with an I-Team investigation that looks at drunk driving in a way no one ever has before. The I-Team obtained thousands of DUI records to see who made the arrest, what the people were drinking, and who served them those drinks before they hit the road. Chief investigative reporter Eric Parker has the results of an investigation more than a year in the making. All right, sir, good to go. Like I said, I was just out here doing my due diligence, making sure everybody's safe to drive. When he's out on the highways patrolling for impaired drivers, State Trooper Sebastian Cummings knows enough to know he can't predict what will happen. He's weaving back and forth in the lanes and driving extremely fast and slow. Uh, it doesn't mean they're under the influence. It could be, but you need to be ready for anything that comes up when you pull that car over. On the night the I-Team rode along in Cummings Cruiser, there were no drunk drivers found, but when he does make a DUI arrest, it's followed by Form A44. The DMV form follows up on the arrest with a series of questions. When did they start drinking? When did they stop drinking? What did they eat? Some people don't answer you. Some people just make stuff up and you just kind of, you have to go along with what they say. But any one DUI stop only tells a piece of the story. So the I-Team decided to look at the bigger picture. We obtained nearly 4,000 DUI reports from the Department of Motor Vehicles. And with the help of I-Team intern Zach Manganella, we crunched the numbers to look for trends. In the first nine months of 2016, there were 3,789 drunk driving arrests in Connecticut. Troop H in Hartford was the busiest state police troop with 208 arrests, followed by Troop G in Bridgeport and Troop E in Montville. For local departments, Hartford police made the most drunk driving bus, with Naugatuck, New Britain, Manchester, and Bristol rounding out the top five. The data also shows what people were drinking before they were busted. Just about 40% admitted to drinking beer. Vodka and wine were second and third. The forms the I-Team obtained show the highest blood alcohol content result from a breathalyzer was a whopping .789. But that amount could be fatal and may just be a typo by police. The next highest result was 0.4126, and there were four breathalyzer results total over 0.4. That's five times the legal limit. So that's who made the bus, what people were drinking, and how much. But the big question we wondered was where drunk drivers were drinking before their arrest. Of the nearly 4,000 reports we reviewed, 866 drivers refused to answer that question. 375 said they drank at home. 81 insisted they hadn't been drinking. And 10 said they'd been drinking at work of all places. But there is a snapshot of which bars and restaurants they may have left. 34 drunk drivers said they had been at Mohegan Sun. 17 said they had been at Foxwoods. One reported being at both casinos and nine drivers just said they drank at the casino without saying which one. That's 61 drunk drivers from the two casinos in southeastern Connecticut. Obviously though, both casinos have dozens of places that serve alcohol and thousands of customers every single day. A spokesman for Mohegan Sun told us they have mandatory training for all servers and bartenders and a system that uses photos to establish who's been cut off. He gave the I-Team a statement saying, quote, we are very proud of the standards we use which we would put up against any establishment in the state. After the casinos, next on the list was 66 Church in Naugatuck, a bar where nine drunk drivers told police they had been drinking before their arrest. A representative from 66 Church told the I-Team the data we reviewed was from when they first opened. They now offer to call any intoxicated customer an Uber, and they even pay the tab. They say the services posted mentioned by bartenders to drunk customers and used almost nightly. They hope it means no more impaired drivers leaving here. Rounding out the top five is the Harpen Dragon in Norwich and Uncle Cranky's in Jewett City, which both showed up five times in the nine months of records the I-Team reviewed. Uncle Cranky's owner, Frank Rubino, said he was surprised to be on the list because his bartenders get mandatory training to spot drunk customers. But he said his biggest challenge is customers who were already drinking before they got to his bar. On the front lines, Trooper Cummings says he's heard it all. But no matter what the drivers say or how they answer those questions, he's got a job to do. You have to go along with what they say. But you need to be patient and just realize that at the end of the day, you got that person off the road. We were struck by many of the answers on the thousands of forms that we looked through from the person who admitted to drinking while driving and then blew a 0.3126 
to the wise guy who, when asked where he drank, responded, your mother's house. If you'd like to see all the responses, we've scanned in all 3,789 forms. They're posted at WFSB.com. With the I-Team, Eric Parker, Channel 3, Eyewitness News.